Our lesson this week, it is the first lesson of the new year. It is the first lesson of a new month. It is also the first lesson in the second unit of lessons for this quarter. And the second unit of lessons for this quarter is titled Blessing of the Gospel. And again, our lesson, as you've already seen, it is titled today, Blessing of Reconciliation. So I feel like there are a few things that we need to first discuss before we even jump into our lesson, before we jump into the scripture. I feel like we need to have an understanding of what the gospel is. I feel like we need to have an understanding of what it means to be blessed, what a blessing actually is. So first off, a blessing, what it means to be blessed is when one is blessed, they are happy. So a blessing is something that will make someone happy. Now, there is a drastic difference, I want you to understand, between a blessing that is of the world and a blessing that comes from the Lord. A blessing that is of the world is something that can bring you happiness, but that happiness does not last. That happiness, as I said in a recent sermon, it is seasonal. That happiness, it is temporary. So that happiness is there one minute, but it fades away the next minute. It is a happiness that has to be replenished over and over and over again. So, for example, if you buy something that makes you happy, over time, that happiness, that something that you bought, it will fade away and you have to go out and you have to buy something else. Someone can give you something that can make you happy. Someone can try to make you happy. But that again, that happiness, as sad as it is to say, that happiness does not last. It has to be replenished. And so someone will have to come and they will have to make you happy over and over and over again. Whereas a blessing that comes from God, it is unique and it is special for us. As James said in his letter, the father of lights, when he pours out his blessings unto us, they not only make us happy, but they make us happy in our soul. They make us happy in our soul. They make us content as well so that we don't have to search around for any other blessing. We don't have to search around for happiness anymore because we are getting this happiness that fills us up in our soul to the point that we are content in our soul. So again, there is a drastic difference between being blessed of the world and being blessed by God. I would much rather have the blessing that comes from the Lord because again, I know that a blessing that comes from God, it is perfect, it is a good gift it is unique for me. It is meant for my soul and it is going to bring joy to my soul and it is going to make me content and happy in my soul as well. Now, with that in mind, we have the gospel. The gospel is God's greatest gift to us. It is his greatest blessing to us. The gospel is Jesus Christ. It is his life. All of the things that he taught, all of the things that he preached. The gospel is the truth and the truth Jesus said will make us free. Well, what is that truth? The truth of the gospel is that we were sinners and we required help in order for us to no longer be that thing that the Lord will cast away from his presence for all of eternity. We are justified sinners because we have received and we have accepted the truth that Jesus shared with us. The gospel is our forgiveness. The gospel is God's mercy. The gospel is salvation. Jesus said that all of those who believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse. That is the gospel summed up. So the gospel, it is a saving gospel. And as we will see here in our Sunday school lesson today, the gospel is a ministry of reconciliation. That word we also need to understand. Reconciliation means restoration. Reconciliation is the restoring of harmony between two things or two people or a group of people, right? So the ministry of reconciliation, as we will see here today in our Sunday school lesson, it is God's work, his restorative work of bringing harmony between himself and to mankind. So we'll see here in our Sunday school lesson today, starting off, I'm gonna start off not in the 11th verse. I know that uh, again, the scripture starts off there in the 11th verse, but I'm gonna start there in the 17th verse. So if you have your Sunday school book or if you have your Bible, open up, let's take a look at the 17th verse and we'll take a look at the 17th through the 19th verses as we begin to start off here in our Sunday school lesson today. We'll see there in the 17th verse, 
that our lesson opens with Paul stating that all of those that are in Christ, this is all of us, all of those who are of genuine faith and are in fellowship, dwelling in fellowship with Christ. Paul says that we are a new creation. He says there that old things have passed away and all has become new. So we need to understand, first off, what is the old that Paul is speaking about here in this 17th verse? So the old is in reference to the old man, that is our old nature. And our old nature, for all of us who genuinely believe, is the nature of sin. Sin, again, is everything that stands in opposition. Sin is everything that is disobedient to the way of God. Sin is what separated man from the Lord. God, he had an eternal desire for mankind. The Lord, he desired to dwell with man eternally. That is why he created us. When you go and you take a look at the first chapter of Genesis and you look at the 26th verse, you see that when God created us, he said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. We were once holy. We were once righteous, but we disobeyed in the garden, right? We, we sinned in the garden. And our sin, it polluted our soul and our soul, it became dark, it became corrupt. And the Lord, because he's never going to dwell with sin, he raised a barrier. And the barrier, it separated us from the Lord. And so God, he still had an eternal desire to dwell with mankind. So in order for him to dwell with mankind, we will see here in our Sunday school lesson that a work of reconciliation had to begin. God, we will see, it say there in the 19th verse, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world. That again is not a select few. God, he loved the world, is what we were told there in the third chapter of John's Gospel, right? So it was not a select few. It was not just some people, but it was all. It was the world. God, we are told there, Paul said, was reconciling the world unto himself. So he was bringing harmony. He was restoring harmony between himself and the whole world, all of mankind. That is something that again, we must understand today, that God loved the world. God's love was unconditional. God's love was not based on how much money or how little money I have in the bank. God's love was not based on the color of my skin or whether my hair was straight hair or nappy hair or, or curly hair. God's love for the world was unconditional. And it was so unconditional that we see here in this scripture today that the Lord, he did not come and impute trespasses against mankind. He could have judged us. And he could have done away with mankind at that point in time, but he did not do so because again, God had an eternal desire. He has still desired to this day to dwell with mankind forever. And that is why he gave us this, again, ministry of reconciliation. That is why he reconciled the world unto himself, because he loved us and because he desired to dwell with all of us for the rest of eternity. So with that in mind, let us take a look at that 18th verse. I know I skipped over the 18th verse, but I want to come right back to it here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we have a ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation that has been given to us to share with all those that are around us. Like I mentioned earlier, the gospel itself, the gospel is a gospel of restoration. It is a gospel of restoration through believing in the only begotten son. So it is a gospel of restoration through faith. It is a gospel of restoration through forgiveness. It is a gospel of, uh, of reconciliation that brings us a salvation as well. So this gospel, it is one that we should not hold on to ourselves, right? We, we can't be selfish about the gospel. The gospel, it should be shared with all of those that are around us. If we take a look there at the 20th verse, we'll see that Paul gets to that point. Paul tells us there, he states that we, the genuine believers, we are ambassadors. You and I are ambassadors for Christ as though the Lord was pleading his case to the rest of the world through us. 
So did you realize that? Did you realize that you are an ambassador for the Lord? Have you ever heard someone say that they are a steward of God? You see, all of us, we are all stewards of the Lord. That's exactly what a steward is. A steward is an ambassador. And an ambassador, if you think about it, is a representative. So you and I, all of us who are of genuine faith, we are representatives of the Lord. So we have to be careful as a representative of God. We want to make sure that we are always on our best behavior, if you will. We want to make sure that we are always setting the best example, the, the best representation of the Lord. So again, if we are going to preach the gospel and if we're going to share the gospel, then we should walk by, we should live by the gospel as well. You and I, we are vessels for the Lord. The Lord, he testifies of himself. To all of those who are not of faith, he does that through you and me. So we as vessels of the Lord, we must carry ourselves in the manner of the gospel. We must carry ourselves in the manner of the good news. We should carry ourselves in the manner as Christ carried himself. Now, some may ask, well, why? Why, why should we represent the Lord in such a way? Why should we carry the word of God to all of those that are around us? Why can't we hold on to the word of God ourselves? So we'll jump back here to the 11th verse. Let us jump back here to the 11th verse and let us take a look at what Paul says there in the 11th verse. Here in the 11th verse, we will see that Paul says that he and others, so the cohorts of the gospel that joined in with the ministering of the gospel in his point in time, at his point in time, I should say, they all ministered the good news to all of those that were around them because they knew the terror it says that they knew the terror of the Lord. Now, what is exactly what what exactly is the terror of the Lord? What do you think that is? Well, the terror of the Lord, of course, is his judgment of sin. You see, God is going to judge sin one day. He he tolerates sin to a point now. He tolerates it to a point to where he will forgive us of our sins if we come to him and we confess our sins unto him. As John, as John said in his first epistle, God, if we confess our sins to him, he is both faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But the day is coming and we must understand this. The day is coming to where God is going to judge the sins of mankind and sin. When it is judged, it will be cast away, as I mentioned earlier. It is going to be cast away from his presence for all of eternity. So you and I, we should go around and we should, again, persuade, not dictate. We should persuade others. We should persuade them to come to Christ. Because, again, we know the terror of the Lord. We, we know that the Lord is one day going to punish sin. We know that he's going to cast sin away from his presence for all of eternity so we should again yes be sharing the good news we should be sharing the gospel we should be sharing in this ministry of reconciliation because we know the terror of the lord and i tell you that there is a way in which we ought to be doing it and the way in which we ought to be doing it is just as christ did christ when he ministered the truth to the world he didn't do it in a, a form of hatred and he did not do it in a form of bitterness when Christ was in the world and when he taught and when he preached and when he healed and when he performed all those miracles that we read about in scripture, he moved out of love. And that is the manner in which you and I should move in today when we are ministering, when we are sharing the good news, when we are testifying of the Lord to all of those that are around us. We should be doing it in a way that is done out of love. We should be doing it out of God's love. And that's something that we'll see Paul touch on here in the next the next few verses of our Sunday school lesson here as we take a look at these last few verses of our lesson today. So we'll see that Paul, he closed out on a note by saying that the love of Christ was what compelled him to go out and to minister the good news, to share the gospel, to share in this ministry of reconciliation so that those he taught and those that he preached to could be reconciled to the Lord. Again, pay close attention to that. It was the love of Christ that compelled him. 
and others to minister the good news. His reasoning, we will see, was based on the fact that we ought to live for the one who died for us. When you think about this again. Christ, he lived with love in his heart for us. So if Christ moved out of a manner of love for us, what makes us better than him to not move out of a manner of love as well? Shouldn't we, his children, right? Shouldn't we, the genuine believers, those who, who follow him genuinely, Shouldn't we move out of the same manner of love for all of those that are around us? We, again, we, we, we can't hold the gospel in to ourselves. We can't keep it to ourselves and then we can't pick and choose as well. We have been commissioned by Christ to go out and to baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And to teach all of those, all nations of people, to observe the things, the way that Christ, again, shared with us the way in which we ought to go. That is what we should be doing. And again, we should be doing it from a place that is of love. So that is our Sunday school lesson today, where we're looking at reconciliation. We're seeing the blessing of reconciliation. What we learn here today is reconciliation, again, is the restoring of harmony between man and the Lord. God restored harmony between himself and us by giving us his only begotten son. We have learned here that we have a ministry of reconciliation as well, and we should join in in that ministry of reconciliation. We should go out and we should share the good news with all those that are around us, that everybody can be saved. Everybody can be forgiven of their sins. Should they repent and turn to the Lord? Repentance leads to that reconciliation to where we will be reconciled to the Lord. So again, God gave himself for us. We have a ministry of reconciliation that was given to us out of love, and we should share this good news with all those that are around us. We should do it out of love as well. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. And I hope that all of you enjoyed this lesson. And I hope that you'll share this video with all those that are around you as well. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. Now, if you want to go into more detail, over this Sunday school lesson. I have commentaries online at newfoundfaith.org. Also, there are audio commentaries as well that you can find on your favorite podcast service there. Also on the Newfound Faith website as well. So you can go there and you can listen to the audio commentary of this week's Sunday school lesson as well. It is a bit more in depth. So if you want some more information, I'll drop the links in the description below so that you can go and listen to it or you can read the Sunday school commentary that I did as well. So again, I hope that all of you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson. And again, I hope that all of you will come back and until next time, let us continue to keep one another lifted up in prayer. You never know what anyone is going through. So certainly be prayerful. Let us also, as we are of genuine faith, let us go out and about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And until next time, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I'll pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.